And now we're ready, ready for our next speaker. And oh my, what an honor it is for me to introduce him. He was the lunar module pilot on NASA's Apollo 16 mission, and as such, became the 10th human being to walk on the moon. Let your brain's GPS think about that for a second or two. He walked on the moon. So when we are uh, at the star party tonight, looking through telescopes at the moon, our next speaker has been there. He's walked on the moon. So it is a great honor. Please help me to welcome astronaut, moonwalker, Charlie Duke. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, my countdown has started, so uh, we got uh, 30 minutes to cover uh, up, up, not Apollo, but Artemis. Uh, thank you all for coming. I want to thank uh, Starmus for this uh, extending another invitation for my wife, Darty, uh, Dottie and I. And uh, we're delighted to be here in Bratislava and have an opportunity to uh, speak uh, again about uh, what I think is going to be one of the most amazing missions uh, of, of, the, of this coming, of this century. And uh, that's uh, the Artemis missions to land on the South Pole region of the moon. Uh, it's been 52 years uh, since uh, I walked on the moon. And the last mission to walk on the moon was Apollo 17. It was in December of 1972. So uh, not too many of us are left around from those crews. Uh, there are four moonwalkers. Of the 12 moonwalkers, there are four of us left alive. And uh, NASA has always said I'm the youngest and uh, well, I'm 88 and I'm still the youngest, so I hope. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, sooner, I hope sooner than later, we'll see uh, another crew uh, land on the, on the moon, uh, Artemis III, uh, at the South Pole region of the, of the moon. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, and. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. I want to thank uh, uh, Garrick and other organizers of Stormus to con continue to invite uh, my wife in here uh, to come. Well, I wanted to do, uh, I got, I asked NASA to send me some uh, slides on uh, Artemis. And uh, so they sent me maybe 50 slides and we're going to get through just a few of them here. Uh, but I wanted to uh, focus on uh, the third Apollo, I mean Artemis, and the third one will be the first landing, first man landing on the moon. The first mission, Artemis 1, is sending a spacecraft unmanned uh, to the moon to try out, uh, make sure the architecture's uh, right and the systems are, will be go. Second one will have uh, a crew, uh, but not land. They'll just orbit the moon. Uh, and uh, then the third mission, uh, Artemis III, will be scheduled to uh, land uh, on the moon. There's a lot of things that have to be done to get that to that stage in Artemis. Uh, there's a big international program. Unlike Apollo, it's, uh, which was just the U.S., this is an international program. So uh, if we all can work together, and uh, focused on the objective at hand, I think we will uh, make it. The uh, space launch system in the left side over there is uh, uh, SS, SLS, Space Launch System. Eventually, it will be bigger than the Saturn rocket that we flew to the moon in on Apollo. Uh, the first couple are going to be smaller than that, but then they're going to expand it. Uh, and it's going to be the biggest rocket uh, ever to uh, take, uh, uh, take flight. 
the Orion spacecraft in the second slide right there uh, is, uh, uh, it's been around a long time. Uh, we had a program uh, uh, years ago by President Bush uh, that was to take us back to the moon. And the uh, Orion spacecraft was part of that, which I call the same as we flew uh, on steroids. Uh, and that was the Apollo command module. But when President Obama came around, uh, that mostly canceled. But the Orion has uh, survived. And uh, we're going to be uh, flying uh, a, a, the human landing system. It's uh, what we call the lunar module to land on Apollo. And the pre I think the reason this mi these missions are so complex is because uh, we're going to land at the south pole of the region of the moon, which if, as you look at the photographs, that is very, very rough terrain down there. But it's the probability of having uh, the most uh, opportunity to find water, for, uh, ice down there. And so it'll, if it's successful, if we fly down and we're successful, it'll be the beginning of a, a, a moon base on the south pole of the region of the moon. Uh, here's uh, Artemis uh, landing humans on the moon. Uh, as you see, uh, we leave Earth. Uh, we come up, uh, Artemis 1 is the one on the left there. Uh, and um, <clears throat> let's see, I think I get a late, uh, well, the laser's not working. Anyway, that first spacecraft, Artemis 1, Artemis 2, first humans to orbit the moon, and rendezvous in deep space. And then uh, Gateway begins science operations. Gateway is a, a, a place that uh, everything comes together for Artemis 3, uh, which will be the uh, first uh, time we'll have uh, a crew uh, on to the uh, lunar surface uh, in over 50 years now. Uh, <clears throat> The, uh, during these missions, uh, we will have uh, build up of the, uh, of the infrastructure, if you will, uh, and the, uh, the, the crew landing systems, the uh, 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 rovers uh, that will be landed there, the surface habitat, all of these vi vehicles have to get there uh, before the crew comes. And so it's uh, going to be uh, a very, very, uh, uh, I think, very demanding mission. Uh, we haven't been to the moon in a while, of course. And uh, uh, as I said uh, earlier, there's not many of us left alive that have our experience. And I've been volunteering to help the present crew uh, to think about some of the things that they ought to be thinking about that might have escaped them. In, you know, in 50 years of going back and reviewing the, the, the uh, uh, missions. Uh, <clears throat> Artemis One is to set the stage for a cadence of human missions and gateway assembly. At the bottom down there, you'll see the uh, SLS, it's a space launch system. It, uh, it, the core stage is like a Saturn, but two big solid rockets on each side. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as we go up to Saturn, uh, Artemis III. Uh, SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy is the third one across. And uh, that is uh, uh, going to be launched uh, uh, with some uh, payloads on it. That, um, anyway, this is the, what it looks, it's going to, the evolution of, of Saturn. Uh, the, uh, above the last Saturn V over there, above it is a four crew plus an airlock. Uh, and uh, the, the airlock uh, would be used uh, uh, to uh, suit up and, uh, and on the surface. Uh, we don't have a, a picture of the, of the actual landing lander here. Let me get, uh, this is one of the uh, first missions. This is uh, Apollo, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Artemis One. It shows starting with number one up there on the Earth. It's a launch. It goes into uh, translunar orbit at number six, a seven that separates. Uh, and then you have the Artemis spacecraft uh, called Orion that goes to the moon. 
and it gets to the moon and uh, goes into, into orbit uh, around the moon. And uh, then it, it comes back again at a higher altitude. And at number 12 down there, it, they burn and then back in uh, behind the moon at 13, then on it goes and comes back uh, to Earth. Uh, on Apollo, we had a three-day journey to the moon, and uh, we had uh, a three-day journey home. Uh, and that profile was selected because of the fuel budget we had. You can get to the moon a lot faster, uh, 12 hours, 13 hours, but you're going so fast when you get there, you don't have enough fuel to slow down get into orbit, and then return. So uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> Artemis is basically the same kind of profile uh, to get the first, uh, the first ones there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Artemis two is this, that, that by the way, that, that flight is unmanned. Uh, and then the first crew mission is uh, Artemis two, uh, and uh, we'll go to the, uh, we'll launch. Uh, from the Kennedy Space Center, pad 39B, uh, and uh, then they will orbit the Earth and leave again, and off they go, uh, and they circle the moon and then come back again in the blue line that brings them back for a splashdown uh, in the uh, Pacific Ocean. I think there's going to be four, uh, four crew there uh, on this uh, spacecraft. Uh, and it's basically the Orion uh, spacecraft that uh, is going to be the crew vehicle going uh, to the moon. And this will be the first flight, crewed flight uh, to the moon since Apollo. And this flight will be very similar to uh, Apollo 8. Apollo 8 was the first time we took the lunar module to the moon. Uh, first time um, uh, we had people at the moon and uh, it was on Christmas Eve, 1968. Uh, it was very dramatic, and in my opinion, Apollo 8 was probably the most, ex ex um, is the most uh, ambitious, riskiest mission that NASA did during Apollo. Reason I say that, it was the first time we'd had a crew leave Earth orbit in the uh, command module. It was only the second flight of the command module and it was only the first flight of the Saturn, big Saturn rocket to lift us off and, and take us uh, out of Earth orbit. So there was a lot, uh, a lot uh, uh, resting on Apollo 8, and I think Apollo uh, Artemis 2 will be basically the same, uh, same kind of uh, uh, a wrist uh, uh, that uh, uh, will be taken uh, to get that crew there and back. Uh, <clears throat> So the, uh, the, the green is getting to the moon, and then uh, the blue is all the way back, and uh, the 13 is where we separate the reentry vehicle from the, uh, uh, what we call the service module, and uh, it burns up on reentry, and then the uh, crew comes in and lands uh, somewhere in the uh, west eastern Pacific Ocean. Okay, uh, start, uh, Artemis three is the uh, first landing on the moon. And you can see the orbits are totally different than uh, uh, what uh, we had in Apollo. Uh, the rectilinear orbit, this big orbit that comes down from the moon, uh, and uh, you, the Artemis will go into that orbit, and they will de then from that orbit, they will descend onto the moon from 16 uh, up until uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, and, and they will land on the south pole of, of, the, of the moon. I've seen some of the pictures that have been taken of the terrain in the south pole region, and it's, the sun angle never gets about two degrees above the horizon. So there's deep, deep shadows and very bright in the sunlight. And there's a lot of uh, I didn't see many craters in the photographs, but there's a, there's a lot of hills and stuff. So picking the first landing spot, I think, will be uh, very, very uh, uh, careful to do that uh, so that they'll have a chance uh, to uh, uh, land. And then uh, the rover should be there, and they'll 
bring a rover over, uh, it'll motor over to where they land. And then for a week or so, the crew will do uh, extra vehicular activities and uh, have a, uh, a, a tremendous, uh, I think, an exciting time. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of things different uh, than we had in Apollo. Spacesuits are going to be uh, more modern, uh, and rovers bigger, uh, and uh, they airlocks. Uh, with, we'd, we didn't have any airlocks in uh, Apollo, and we just tracked moon dust in. And uh, it got really bad uh, uh, on the floor of the lunar module, but it was gravity. We had one six gravity, so we just strung our hammocks up, uh, put uh, put our, uh, took off our suits and uh, went to sleep. Uh, and we didn't think anything about all this moon dust we tracked in uh, till we got back in orbit. And when we got back in orbit, uh, before rendezvous, all this moon dust floated up all over the spacecraft. And John Young, my commander, was so concerned, he wanted us to stay in our tight loop in a suit so we won't get contaminate the environmental control system. So we dock, docked up uh, with Mattingly in, uh, in orbit and uh, he opens the hatch and looks in and all that dust. And he says, you're not coming in here. <laughs> and uh, so he closed the hatch again. And then uh, we were talking to him on the radio. Finally, he, he floated over a little vacuum cleaner, uh, dust devil, and we started vacuuming up the moon dust. And finally, he gave us permission to come back in. And so we got, uh, got back over with all of our 200 pounds of moon rocks and all of the experiments that we brought back with us. Uh, we were very pleased that uh, Ken would let us back in, of course, because that's your, your ride home. And without that, uh, of course, he's coming home himself. But he wouldn't have done that to us. Uh, <clears throat> so at Artemis III is this big orbit uh, the, in the center of the slide, number 17. Uh, and then uh, number seven is going into orbit, down to eight, and then back up again. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, I, I can't remember the name of that uh, uh, halo orbit, they call it. Uh, and. Uh, I, I still don't understand why it's such a big orbit, but uh, that's the way they got it now. And uh, somewhere in there, they will rendezvous with the uh, lunar lander, and then the crew will start down and uh, on the, uh, the descent and land, and then come back up again and rendezvous with what was we call the command module, or the uh, uh, the well forgot now what they call it. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, they're going to have the, uh, the landing. Uh, hopefully it'll all go well. And uh, the flight after that uh, will be, we'll be on our way. There are a couple of pieces of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the objects uh, that you'll see in this uh, big oblong orbit in the center called Gateway Orbit. Uh, there's going to be a, a piece there uh, that's uh, made by the Europeans, I believe, and, uh, and it will join up and uh, the, the, uh, it will be a place to uh, recover and get everything ready to go until you get down and get ready to descend and you know, the, most of the gateway stuff will be left, uh, left there uh, in orbit. Then you come back into, into uh, uh, into uh, uh, orbit again and join up with the, the, the gateway pieces and uh, get ready to come home. Uh, <clears throat> this mission uh, with Artemis, uh, well, Artemis three is going to be about 12 days, I think. These missions here are, are longer than that. They'll have four-man crew uh, and, uh, and we, they will launch also from in the SLS from uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, I'm helping out a little bit, uh, help with the, uh, with the briefing of the crews and uh, looking at uh, uh, advising a little bit on the lunar rover. Uh, uh, things are going to be a lot more complicated than what we had. And just looking at the, the, the 
the architecture of the orbits is uh, totally uh, more uh, complicated uh, than, than we had on Apollo. All we had to do was get in lunar orbit, check out the spacecraft, separate, leave the command module in orbit, and then we went down to land. And, and uh, but this is basically the same architecture, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to pull off, in my opinion. Uh, we are, uh, uh, they're working hard, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be on schedule. Uh, this is the Artemis One set the stage for cadence of human missions. Uh, uh, the the uh, the uh, airlocks, the four crew, uh, or, uh, Orion, uh, other pieces of the spacecraft, uh, and the size of the rockets you see down below uh, is um, it's, it's uh, they're as I said earlier, a lot. The one on Artemis six is a lot bigger than the uh, Saturn, and uh, so it'll be a, a pretty good liftoff. So these are the pieces that uh, they've got to get going. Uh, and uh, they, the only piece that's really, think, I think, is ready to go is the uh, Orion, uh, the spacecraft that's been around for a while. Uh, the lunar module is being, uh, or the lander, uh, is being worked on by a, uh, a SpaceX and also a Blue Origin. And uh, to my knowledge, they don't have a a, a settle on which one they want to they want to select, but I'm really excited about uh, the civilian uh, activities that are in space now. SpaceX and Blue Origin, especially. You know, when they started about four or five years ago, I said, "This is crazy. Uh, why are we hiring these people?" But they're so sharp. And they had the good gear, and and they came to NASA and said, uh, "Hey, this is what we got. You want to buy it?" And NASA said, "Yeah, we'll buy that." And they gave them a contract to three. I think it was three different contractors. And SpaceX has been uh, just phenomenally successful. And I see in the future uh, what NASA will do is is focus on deep space, the moon, building a space station uh, on the moon. It's going to be a great place for science um, and learning how to mine some minerals up there, perhaps, and then uh, leave near space, near Earth orbit, to the private people. And uh, so we'll see how that turns out. That's my opinion. That's what's going to happen. But uh, NASA just doesn't have the money. Uh, People have asked me, why did we wait 50 years to go, to go back to the moon? And well, when we were on, John Young and I were on the moon on Apollo 16, they announced the a space shuttle program. And uh, that program was a transportation system into orbit. And that's what NASA focused on. So NASA was, Apollo was so successful, they, they canceled the last three missions in Apollo and put all the money in space shuttle. Then they put all the money in that NASA had uh, into the space station. And so now those programs have come, uh, shuttle's gone now and space stations come into an end, probably 2030 or so. So we got some money uh, to return to the moon. And I think the, his, the, the future of manned space is, is, is to the moon and beyond. Uh, the, the moon and beyond the moon for human being is going to be a very critical missions. Uh, and we got to think long and hard of how we want to fly those uh, with, uh, because once you leave Earth orbit, uh, you can't say, hey, Houston, uh, widget number two broke. Uh, and uh, what do we do? I said, well, you're on your own. Uh, you know, we can't help you. So that's the kind of focus that we need for deep space missions, uh, missions like uh, to Mars, manning, uh, going to Mars, six months to Mars and six months back and let's say two months at orbit. You're exposed to all of the radiation. Uh, how do you pick a crew? 
Do you have a doctor on board? Do you for, perform surgery? Uh, it's just a lot of decisions uh, to be made and correct decisions to before we commit uh, human beings to Mars. So I think the future, I won't be around when we get a Mars mission. Uh, and uh, I'm still physically qualified for space flight, but. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. But I, I have gentle hint from NASA, don't call us, we'll call you. So <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not expecting a call. So anyway, uh, that's uh, Artemis and I think NASA's going to stick with it. And uh, we're going to have a tremendous uh, challenge uh, in the next decade uh, to return to the moon. Uh, so I wish all the astronauts and all the crews well, and uh, uh, let's go NASA. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.